Hi, this is Spencer Franks, PM here at Chartmetric. Today I'm going to show you a little bit around the product and try to get you a little bit more acquainted with some of the tools and use cases that are out there. So we're starting off on the artist page. In particular, we're starting off with Logic's artist page. And you can see here that we have some summary descriptions of him, some of the stats that we have. We also have uh, the links to the data sources. So if you see your artist and they don't have uh, links, that'll help us get more data for you. Uh, and so starting off with the social charts, this is one of the more popular areas. We can see the performance of the, these metrics over time. Uh, right now I have chart sync on, that's why you see all these different changes at the same time. If I turn it off, then you only see at the one that I'm looking at. So if I'm looking at Spotify monthly listeners, I can see that around, looks like July 24th, there was a big uptick in the number of monthly listeners. And you can actually see that this is due to a new album release. Actually at the same time, this is when Logic announced his own retirement after this album, but it's still a good indicator of why this may have happened. You can actually also look over different periods of time to see what the trend is for a longer period of time, um, including it up until we first started collecting data. And so if I wanted to see how this album release impacted other metrics, I can turn this chart sync back on, kind of get back to this 24th period. And I can see, for example, oh, this is around this period when time grew here. Um, I also have right now only a limited number of charts. If I actually want to see all the charts, I need to go into chart configuration, unlock all these, apply them. And now I have all the different charts. So I can see daily video views at YouTube shot up around this time. I can see the Twitter followers shot up around this time. It's really informative, really helpful for me to know what are some of the things that are happening basically. Um, so next I'm gonna scroll down to audience. We have some location data for Spotify and YouTube. We also have age, uh, gender, uh, ethnicity from different data sources. So here we have Instagram, we have YouTube and TikTok. So these could be really useful if you're trying to figure out where to spend those marketing dollars. For example, if I'm trying to target, uh, you know, more male audience, maybe I would use TikTok then compared to, like I said, actually, he has mostly male audience, but <laughs> if I wanted to really target male audience, I guess I would tar target uh, Instagram uh, more than I would target TikTok. Um, so that's kind of a ways for you to figure out what you should be focusing on and where to spend those key dollars. Um, going down further, we have playlists. This is where you can see the reach of the artist and how many playlists they're on. So you might see cases where the playlist reach increases a lot and that's again, because that new album release, um, they're probably put on some of the more like new release Friday type of playlists, some of those ones with a lot of reach. And you can, so you see that uptick in the reach here. Um, we have for Spotify, Apple Music, Deezer, Amazon playlists, and they also have like the playlists themselves. Um, so you can kind of see what are some of these particular playlists in general where you can see like the number of followers increasing a lot. Um, and then if I wanted to actually go into a, one of these playlist itself. So let's look at beast mode real quick. With beast mode, with these playlists, you can see some of the metrics on each of the playlists as well. Um, so I can see the number of followers. Um, one of the more interesting things that I like to point out is this playlist journeys feature. So we can see here that EDM workout has a lot of songs that started off on EDM workout and later became part of beast mode. So that's this look back function. We can see what songs and when they were uploaded to playlists before they're uploaded to beast mode. Um, and so you can see there's a 58% overlap. And then if I wanted to look ahead, it'd be the other direction. So songs that were added to playlists after they were on beast mode. So after they're on beast mode, a lot of songs get put on the workout sport music uh, weekly update. So if I wanted to have an idea of how to get on to beast mode, maybe I don't target getting onto beast mode, maybe I target first to get onto EDM workout 2020 or EDM charts 2020. Um, and then from there I can get onto the beast mode or other large playlists. Um, moving on, we're gonna talk a little bit about charts now. So everyone loves charts. Um, we definitely love charts at Chartmetric, it's part of our name. And so right now I'm looking at TikTok, we also have plenty of other data sources. Uh, we have Spotify, for example, Amazon, iTunes, what have you. We have different metrics and different uh, charts for these different uh, data sources. And so we also have it over different periods of time. And so again, uh, the historical nature of the product comes into play. So I can see what it is today, August 20th, 2020. Number one song is WAP. But if I wanted to look back, let's say, actually, let me just grab this real quick to 
over January 5th, 2019, I can see, again, the same metrics of like what labels, time on chart, those type of things, but I can see what they were. Oh, and it was Sunflower, uh, Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse. Great movie, by the way. And you can see what was really popular at this time. And this is kind of helpful if you want to have an idea of what have been the trends in the past. It might be a useful way for you to figure out what's popular during different times of the year, things like that. Um, this is, I think, one of our better features, the fact that we can look back in time and see how things have changed. That's it for today. Thank you for your time.